Today on Community Cooking, we have guest chef Jeff LaVia in the kitchen with us, and on the menu we're making seared scallops with bacon shallot peas, served over red potatoes with a basil pea puree. And if that's not enough, we're whipping up a fresh arugula salad with Parmesan crisps, served with a tomato and lemon basil vinaigrette. Phew, this is going to be an amazing meal. We're cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community, so grab a seat and relax. We have another great meal coming at you. This is your Community Cooking. Hi, and welcome to Community Cooking. I'm your host, Maria Prekogis, and I always like to have this guy here in studio, Jeff LaVia, because I know it's going to be great and so much fun. Uh, always a pleasure to be here with you, Maria. Uh, you know, we've, you've done this for a while, and we've become great friends, and I've learned lots of great recipes, maybe put on a few pounds because <laughs> of you, but I still love you. But today, we're doing some stuff with scallops and a lot of peas. Tell me what's on the menu. Uh, we're going to do some seared scallops that are topped with some peas that have been sauteed with some bacon and some shallots. We're going to put that all on a basil puree with some roasted potatoes and serve that up with a lovely salad. Yum, and the scallops are gorgeous. That, you know, who doesn't love bacon? And <laughs> tell me first ingredients for this section. So what we're going to do is we have our uh, peas here. Uh, you can do frozen if you can find fresh at the farmer's market. Those are always good. You might spend a little time shelling them, but there's something kind of fun about that. There is, there you know, is. You put on your country hat and you're, you're good to go. <laughs> uh, then we have some shallots, we have some bacon, we have some uh, potatoes. And you can get whatever kind of potatoes that you like. Uh, I, I enjoy the colorful ones. You know, we're, we're, we want to make a really pretty plate with this. You know, everyone kind of takes out their cameras before they pick up their forks. So I thought it'd be fun to do some really pretty food and really pretty plating. So. You know, we've got the, we're going to cook the peas up and make a puree out of that, but also serve them as a dual purpose, and they're going to garnish the scallops a little bit, too. I love it. And the scallops, just my size, very large. I and, like it. And always try and get dry weight scallops. Otherwise, they're a little more expensive than regular scallops, but you're not paying for the water. Oh, okay. D hence, dry weight. I never, there's a new term I learned. I no? love it. And I do love the colored potatoes. Um, sometimes, you know, you cook with colored veggies. Today, it's colored potatoes. I love it. And you're right. Everyone, you, um, obviously Jeff's on Instagram and Facebook and all that, and you take all of your food. I'm like, okay, I have to call him and ask him how he made that because <laughs> it's so beautiful. And we are so food obsessed with taking the photos and putting them on social media. So this will be fun. But what should we do first? Uh, let's get the peas going first. Okay. I will hand you the peas. That's a lot of peas, by it, the way. It is. Uh, we're going to start off by just putting them in some boiling salted water. Okay. And, you know, get them nice and close so you're not getting splashed with the boiling water. <laughs> That's always good. That's why you're doing it over there. And you're just going to let them just cook through and warm through here. Okay. Set Perfect. That right there. These are in the water. You give that a little bit of stir. And you salt it for flavor a little bit? Um, yeah. For I always like to salt the water. You know, uh, you want to salt and season as you go along. You don't want to wait till the end. Okay. Because then you're just tasting the salt. When you season as you go, it gets incorporated into the food, and that's what gives you a really nice, deep flavor. Okay. So after, you know, we have our peas going, we're just going to let them hang out for a little okay. bit, and we can start with our uh, bacon and shallots. We have shallots, which I love. I love shallots almost more than onions. I do, too. They're, they're much more mild. Uh, they can still make you cry. They can. <laughs> Hence, we cut them ahead of time because yeah. I didn't want to, you know, smear the makeup. Ha, ha. And then we have some bacon. And, you know, when you're making pretty food, you want to start at the beginning. You want to you want to pick, you know, colorful things. You want to cut your bacon or your shallots, pretty much uniform. Okay. That all comes together. It all plays together. I just use scissors. Uh, I was gonna say kitchen shears to cut the bacon. Oh, I love it. And we just put a little bit. We. Oh, I thought, thought you were gonna cut the rest of that. I was getting all excited. <laughs> <laughs> we can. That's all right. We can save it for later. So we've got, I would say, four pieces of bacon okay. in there that are all cut up, and you know. I like Bacon you, and onions or shallots, it I all mean, goes together. I mean, we could together. leave the scallops out. <laughs> scallops happen to be one of my favorites, so we'll put them in. But yeah, half the time when you cook, just the start of it is a meal in it, itself. It, it really is, especially if you're the if you're the one cooking. You're tasting as you go, and 
before you know it, it's time to eat dinner and you're not even hungry. Well, with the bacon and shallots, you don't need any extra oil in the pan for starters. No, you do not. Which is good. So these just... And it, they don't take long. It, it'll, this will come together pretty quickly. The shallots will soften up. If, as long as you cut them good and thin. If you leave them pretty thick, then it'll take a little bit longer. That's why I also cut the bacon down for appearance, but also it has a, a quicker yeah. cook time. I love it. And these just come together nicely. We're going to hit this with a little bit of salt and pepper. Of course, Jeff has his fancy dancy <laughs> salt. Oh, I love it. I, I got it in an antique shop. I was going to say, that Traveling. does not look brand new. It's a little bit of it's salt. It's always fun. To kosher have or seed? Kosher. kosher. I always do kosher. And, you know, when you're, if you ever read reviews of, of recipes online and people are saying it just came out so salty, <laughs> they probably use the regular table salt. Because if you're, you know, putting a, ta a teaspoon of, yeah. like, table salt compared to a teaspoon of kosher salt, think of how much more salt that is. Yeah, I never thought about it that way, but I use kosher. I love it. I like kosher better than sea. Sea is great for finishing, um, but using it in regular cooking, I just, um, I'd much rather just use kosher. It okay. melts quicker. It's got a nice, clean flavor, and it doesn't really interfere with anything else. And now they have, you know... Salts that are smoked, salts that are... I know, I'm like, I just want a little salt. Give me one or two choices, that's it. But yeah, they, they get fancy, which is fun. So these are just cooking up nicely. Okay. Our peas are going. We're actually ready to take our peas out here. And we're going to do two things with our peas. Part of it's going to be for garnish. The other part of it is going to be for our puree. Okay. So we're going to pour a little bit of our cooking liquid into the blender to help process the peas. Okay. So just You're going to pour because I would spill that. <laughs> just a little bit. Some okay. of the peas might fall in, and then we're going to strain the rest of our peas out here. Right I hit down it from here. Yeah. <laughs> See how I am? So the bacon and shallots are cooking in, I'd like to say their own juice, but a little bit of the bacon fat. Jeff's straining the peas. We're going to, the peas will be dual purpose today. They are going to be dual purpose. For we're our put puree. Some in the puree here. And in the puree, we're also going to add a little bit of garlic, some heavy cream, some uh, basil and some parsley. Yeah. Okay, we don't need to make a lot here. We're going to save those. All right. Do a little bit more. And this just, it comes out nice and vibrant and pretty and... Well, I mean green with the peas are great. Okay. So, I got your garlic. Thank you so much. And you don't need to chop it up because it's going to go in the blender and get whizzed around. See, we love blenders, food processor, anytime you don't have to. And that's the heavy cream, I'm assuming. It sure is. <laughs> See, I listen to your ingredients. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit, a tablespoon or two. Okay. You're so great. I think too many people are like, I have to measure everything perfectly. Now, baking, I agree with measuring. Yes. Baking powder that's and all a of that. But um, with cooking, well, cooking every, you know. Don't get so stressed out about it. No, have fun. And with, with, with cooking, especially stuff when you get it from the farmer's market, it could taste different from week to week. Some weeks it might be a little more fresh. Some weeks it might be a little more ripe. So taste as you go. Some recipes might call, might, you might need a little more salt one week. You might need a little pinch yep. of sugar. So it's really important to taste as you go and not be afraid to vary from the recipe. Yeah. And not be afraid to taste. That's my favorite. <laughs> uh, we can put a little bit of basil in here. Okay. And this is... Can you get it any more fresh than <laughs> yeah. this? I'm thinking not so much. <laughs> Just a couple little leaves here. We're going to put that in. And if you can hand me mm. some parsley. Mmm. Oh, that? Okay. So yummy. That basil. Just a little bit of parsley in here as well. So we I have our peas, our water, our garlic, our basil. I forget about basil. And it's great in salads. A little, little pepper. Bit of salt and pepper. You want to season everything. You're going to eat it all, so it might as well taste good. Yeah, bro. Or why bother? Exactly. <laughs> Let's check our bacon here. It's but Jeff's also a caterer, so if he comes over and caters, you don't have to worry about it. You no. know it's going to taste good. You don't. We'll take care of you. Look at that. Oh, it smells so yummy. And it's just cooking up here. We can turn this heat up just a little bit. Just want to make sure your bacon's cooked through. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to get it super crunchy. Okay. So we have this going. Our, I our have a lid for you. I suggest we use it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just going to puree this up here. Start with a little full. And just puree until smooth. Okay. Just puree until it is smooth. Now, since we are all about presentation with this dish, yes, we're going to strain our pea puree and get out some of the salt so we have a nice, light, 
fluffy. And, and a lot of chefs will do this with their sauces. You know, you start and just put some in here. Oh, so it's, I do that with a Greek dish. <laughs> My mother used to say, you must strain it. What, which one's that? The, um, the, uh, I had to, no, I just <laughs> went, no. Um, sometimes with the spinach pie, the spanakopita yeah. things, you don't want lumps in your bechamel sauce. Oh, of course she not. Went, she went big and did bechamel sauce, and so we would always strain that and make sure there's no cornstarch. But Oh, yeah, that is a big difference between yeah. the strained and the non-strained. And we're going to add a little bit of this to it just to give it some body. Okay. Tiny bit more. You just don't want a lot of clumps in there. Okay. But a little bit's okay. But it is a t definitely a different texture. Yeah, for sure. We're going to leave the majority of the solids out. Just give us a little bit here. Green's such a good color. It is. It's your and color. And it's pretty on a plate. <laughs> it is pretty on a plate. Give it a little taste here. Mm -hmm. That Oops. is yummy. Nice and fresh and light. That? I would just eat that. And see, now you're stuck with this, and you gotta got to put it right back here, and then but we can just okay. get this whole thing out of the way here. Oh, that is yummy. Okay. Pea puree. Well, it's all, like I said, if you can get fresh herbs and spices, it makes all the difference. So we got our puree done, and now yep. what we want to do is we're going to take our peas here, our reserved peas. And they were just hanging out. They were getting lonely. They you know. were. They were, they were <laughs> getting lonely. They were getting cold, so we just want to give them a little bit of love. And what's more love than bacon and shallots? Not much. So you're going to put the bacon and shallots in the peas that are still warm, but not over the heat. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we've got all these going like this. And we're just going to add this right to Oh, my it. gosh. Yeah, I could just eat that. No, I could, too. I but have. we're going to go with what Jeff says and have the full meal. Oh, I'm sorry. That piece of bacon came out. Mm -hmm. And this oh. just gets together with that shallot it's really nice mm -hmm. huh mm. sign me up see here we're almost done almost got all these out but you want to keep the juice yes. still in at the least pan a good tablespoon of bacon fat okay and then I always kind of wipe this off just so no grease and you don't get a grease fire okay and we're just gonna mix this together here and this just that already looks pretty oh it's I mean, gorgeous look at that. nice good the colors peas, the pea puree the bacon. So we got already in just a few minutes two of our components done yep. for our dish. Okay. And the rest of it is actually pretty easy. So we already have that going. Okay, and it's hot. It's hot. We have some bacon fat in there, but really bacon fat isn't enough. So <laughs> let's add some. Butter. I was like, what are we using the butter for? Oh, oh, we're gonna add it to our go. bacon. There we go. Oh it's yeah, good thing down. it's scallops in there, you know. <laughs> low in low in calories and fat. So we're just going to let that okay. uh, melt down, and we have our scallops here. And as I said, these are dry weight scallops. They're sitting on a paper towel, so you want to soak off some of the moisture, okay. and that'll give you a nice browning. Okay. That'll give you a nice crust. And scallops are so good, they need so little to go with them. They really are one of my favorites. They're kind of, they're, I, I, they're candy of the ocean. Yeah, I think they're so. They're so sweet. And a lot of times you'll be in a restaurant and you might get three or four on a plate. And I'm like, well, that's not enough. It's so enough. They, it, it, they it, go a long way. Yeah, it really is. And we're going to sprinkle these with a little bit of salt. Our butter is melting over here in our bacon fat. That just sounds good. Why wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> of course, our butter is melting in our bacon fat. And what's nice is that you also have to flavor the shallots in that yep. bacon fat as well. So that's all going to kind of infuse okay. in the scallops. It's almost melted down here. Oh. Get that yeah, the good. flavors for I, I I get how it's all gonna come together. Okay. And then we will put our scallops. We're gonna put our scallops in here as soon as the butter is almost done melting. We're ready to go here. And then salt and pepper the other side when they're in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can start doing that and just let them sit. Pe you know. You want to let things sit until they easily release from the pan. <laughs> You're telling the girl with no patience. <laughs> I'm always turning and over, oh, so it's it's good to have these refreshers with you. Let them let them let them chill. Let them hang out. You know, it, it's an easy tendency to want to overwork your food. Let it relax. Yes. Let it relax. Relax when you're doing it. Let your food relax and have a glass of wine. I was gonna say I usually have wine with that, but yeah. Well, wine, I mean, wine and cooking go together. They do. In the cooking, outside of the cooking. 
want exactly. I was just gonna say that. Wherever you want it. Okay. Those are gorgeous. I have a refrigerator magnet that says, I, I cook with wine, or wait, how does it go? I use wine, sometimes I even put it in the food. Yeah, exactly. So you're gonna let these go for roughly three to four minutes per okay. side, depending on the size of the scallop. All right, while those are cooking, you're gonna season the other side. Season the other side here. Yeah. yeah, those are good looking scallops. Good heavens. And they cook up Peppa. really pretty quick. I do like mine cooked all the way through. Some people yep. like them slightly opaque in the center. If I'm having sushi, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I was going to say, sushi I'm fine with, but... Okay. And I have had scallop sushi. It's delicious. It's, it's sliced really super good. thin. Okay, so now we got this going. I've got my handy tongs here. I was going to say, I'm very impressed you went to that hot butter and <laughs> bacon grease with you your You can even see the, the butter starting to oh, brown. Yeah. So we'll see if they pick up. So they picked up. They're already looking good. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you're right. They do not take long. They're slippery little suckers. They are slippery. It's a line from a movie, I believe. It is. I, I can name it. Can <laughs> I you? I can too. We'll let our we'll doubt, viewing we'll, audience go, well, of course it's that. We, oh, I yeah. guess if we if we say it, we date ourselves, right? Yeah, exactly. I see the reruns. <laughs> That's right, it's on cable. It's on, of course. So now we're going to take a little bit of the butter okay. and baste the scallops with oh. it. Well, of course. And it just gives it extra flavor. It continues to help brown the top of the scallops. Oh. And the butter is browning so nicely in there. And with the bacon fat and the shallot flavor. Yum. Just kind of baste them a little bit. I do this when if I ever cook fillets. Uh, I'll do. I'll cook my fillets the same way. I always baste it with butter. You know what? I, I never baste them when I, because I do fillets a lot. Okay. Now we're just gonna let those hang out. Okay. And we can move on to our next task. All right. Well, my next task is gonna be to tidy up. We're gonna come back when we get back and do some potatoes and our arugula salad. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Community Cooking. No, really, check it. When detected early, skin cancer is highly treatable. Learn more about what to look for at spotskincancer.org. Welcome back to Community Cooking. I'm Maria Prakachis, and if you're just joining us, we are having way too much fun with way too much great food with Jeff Livia in the kitchen. Scallops are just setting for a second. We have our double-duty peas ready. We're going to do some Parmesan crisps and potatoes we and got a salad. It. Yep. All super easy. We have some colorful potatoes here. I love the purple potatoes. I know. I'm glad are, we're using purple today. They are my favorite. And for what you want to do for your potatoes, uh, cut them quarter inch thick. Okay. Look at that. That's a potato, people. It's purple. I know. How can you beat this color? I know. It's great. If you want to mix them up, that's fine. But I think with all the green, I like the purple. And then what we would do is we would toss these with some salt and pepper. Okay. And a little bit of canola oil. Okay. You can actually just do that right here. Why dirty another dish? See, I like how you think. We'll just do a couple here. Just a okay, little bit of canola oil. And just a little salt and pepper just to kind of show you here. I feel like you're your assistant in the operating room. <laughs> salt, pepper. I thought you were my magician's assistant. Yeah, it's something like that. So you just toss them. Yeah, just toss them. And then... You're really making potato chips. Oh, well, even better. And you just lay them out. Again, pick something with nice color, cut it in nice uniform shape, and those bake in a 425 degree oven for anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, depending okay. on your oven. Okay, we have some cooking right now, but then we want to show, I don't believe you on this, so the Parmesan chips. Parmesan chips. I, I love them. They are a crouton without the gluten. So he said the Parmesan cheese. I'm like, well, where are the other ingredients? You that's, that's it. This could not be easier. Yeah. Are, are you ready? Yeah. Seriously? I could do this. Okay. Anyway, you could do this. One, one, two, three. That's all you do. I didn't realize that Parmesan actually... When it bakes, it, yeah. it, you, you, bake the, you don't bake the potatoes and the Parmesan at the same yeah. temperature. You do this at 350 degrees, 
and it'll take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes depending on your oven. Okay, so we're just showing this, but put them on separate pans, separate times. And that's it. That's, that I know, I was like, where are the other ingredients? It. He's like, it's the cheese only, Maria. And it's so great because awesome. it's, it's, you know, a lot of times our clients want stuff that's gluten-free, but you still need a little crunch in your salad. Yeah. So this acts as that. Or you can just snack on them and eat them like crackers. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll be eating them like crackers. All right, so then to top everything off, we need some greens. Got to have a little salad. So the Parmesan we'll crisps are for the salad. It's going to act okay. as our crouton. We have some fresh arugula here. We got the farmer's market, which I love. We have these gorgeous tomatoes oh. here that we also got at the farmer's market. Tomatoes are one thing that if you buy at the farmer's market here, such a difference. It is. They just such have so much more flavor. So we're just going to give these a very quick little chop. And again, all the different colors are gorgeous. And then we'll save some to put on top of the salad. We'll mix some in and then okay. put some on top. An so arugula, little cut. some people, I eat it raw without even dressing, but a lot of people have to have a little dressing because it is pretty peppery. It, I, but I, I, I am a black it. pepper, red pepper, white pepper. It doesn't Get matter. Get pepper. Exactly. You're a pepper, I'm a pepper. <laughs> Something like that. We like our pepper. And we're going to yeah. make a very simple lemon basil vinaigrette. Okay. I got a lemon for you. Two to one. So we're going to do one part lemon juice to two parts olive oil. I got the basil. I have our tree of basil. And... But I like doing them in, in glass jars. A, you can put a lid on it and just shake it up. You don't have to dirty something else. But you can also see easier. So you can see how much you're, as long as you don't get squirt in the I eye. was going to say, good thing he has his glasses on. It's the lemon juice gets you. And it's okay if some seeds go in there because you can strain it out. Okay. Really easy here. Depending on your lemon, again, taste for things. It yep. might need a little pinch of sugar. Uh, we're going to add some basil, maybe just a couple of leaves here. I love that. And it just gives it a Love little the bit of flavor. I'm taking the tree of basil, huh? <laughs> you can plant that and have basil for life. Basil for life. I know, isn't that crazy? So we're going to add that. And now we see how much lemon juice in here, so you just okay. add twice as much olive oil. Alrighty. And it will actually, sep you know, if it sits long enough, it'll separate like oil and vinegar. Look, I have the salt and pepper ready for you. I'm assuming we're using it. And there we go. So two to one, nice lemon good, to olive oil. Nice, good quality olive oil. We're going to add a little bit of salt. A little pepper. A little pepper. <laughs> and now comes the fun part. He's going to shake, shake, shake. I was just going to say, do you want to shake, shake, shake? <laughs> I think we need to see you shake, shake, shake. Uh, shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake. I'll shake with you. Shake, shake, shake. <laughs> shake your dressy. Something <laughs> like that. That's a commercial. I know. Right don't there. give up your day job. <laughs> okay. There you go. Beautiful. Nice and we and toss simple. that on. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing you back to your just arugula. Just a tiny little taste here. Make sure it. Mm hmm. Yeah, I can see it. It's Are these little salt and pepper. See, oh, again, that's why you want to taste it. Just a little bit. Just this up really quick again. We don't need to do the whole shebang. Mm. Oh, really? I want to see you shake some more. <laughs> Come on. That's a one time. All thing. those in favor of Jeff shaking more salad dressing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's beautiful and I can easy. See, see my tongs here? So, tongs need to be used for everything. They really do. Tongs and, and clean hands are really the, the yeah. cook's best tool. I mean, people, my brother actually has owned restaurants, and he uses tongs. He'll have them at home and whip them out for things. I'm like, why are you using tongs for that? But he doesn't have them, like, in a holster that he just kind of, like, Pretty much. Pretty out. much. So, again, we have some of our tomatoes in here just to get them coated and get some base in the salad. And our salad's done. Super easy. All right. So now then. We season it. Now, do we plate up the scallops with everything on it, or we don't need to mix it together? We, so. I like to, because again, we're doing something kind of pretty. Yeah. So you really want to take a little bit of time and compose your plate. Okay. Have fun. This is one of those times when play with your food. Okay. See, kids and adults, you can play with your food. All right. Well, I want it to be extra pretty, so we're going to take a quick break. We're going to clean everything up and see Jeff's beautiful food and get a taste it when we come back. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Community Cooking. Drownings are a leading cause of death for young children. Make sure kids learn how to swim. Always watch them in and around water and properly fence all pools. Simple steps save lives. To learn some new ones, visit PoolSafely.gov. Welcome back to Community Cooking. My favorite part tasting, but Jeff, it's too pretty to eat. <laughs> it's never too pretty to eat. That just I makes it get, taste better. I want to get my phone out. We were talking earlier, if you're just joining us, that... 
people do before they taste, before they do anything, they whip out their cell phones and they take pictures of their food and share it. It's all over Instagram, social media. It's you know, you have to see what everyone's eating. Oh, of course. And then, but if you see this, you're going to go, okay, it's too pretty to eat. No, we just need to know how to make it. So I'm most impressed too with Parmesan only. Parmesan only. And those are addicting. You can. Oh, they're so good. It, it, <laughs> they're like a bag of potato chips. They really are. That, I mean, it's just yummy goodness. Yeah. And you're yummy. All your yummy food can be available because you cater. We do. Mr. J's Kitchen. We do all sorts of events from small little dinner parties where you can get something like this plated up to 300 people corporate events. You know, we do it all. And it's it, people love it. We can do stuff that's gluten free. We get a lot of requests. We can handle it all. And, and, and people really enjoy it. Ask for the Parmesan crisps. <laughs> Those are really good. All right, I'll share my plate with you even. Maybe oh, not the you. Parmesan crisp, but I want to taste the salad. And this is pretty enough to be good wedding food. Oh, yeah. Mmm. The dressing is perfect. I gotta it, have a crisp. Oh, yeah, I just have that solo. But with the arugula, I love the peppery arugula, but the dressing just tames it enough, but enhances the flavor as well. And of course, the tomatoes, from our farmer's market are awesome, but oh my god, you're not getting that last cheese crisp. I'm just <laughs> I was you eyeing right it. I was there. eyeing I it. We'll split it. All I right. was going to distract you and keep you talking. Oh, I know. Hey, look over there. So now the scallops with our pea puree, mm -hmm. and I have to show off. I want to taste the potato separate. We made a little flour out of the potatoes. Presentation's everything, especially when you're entertaining. The potatoes are perfect. Oops. <laughs> Got a pea. <laughs> Got my pea. Got the pea. All right. The scallop. I'm going to dip it in the puree. Which acts as a sauce and... I messed up your beauty. Yeah, it's Sorry. okay. That's what it's meant to do. Oh! <laughs> I'll save you the scallops. Oh, my word. All right. The flavors and the butter, but you can't taste the bacon fat. Oh, it's just so good. Thank you so much for joining me today. Y your recipes are always so great. Always my pleasure, Maria. I love it. And I urge you, urge you to either call him and have him cater or make <laughs> this at home. And remember, we really do have some of the best chefs right here in our community. On behalf of Jeff, myself, and the whole crew, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time on Community Cooking. If you'd like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations. That's 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200, in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number displayed on the screen. And don't forget, you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. That's located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. rain or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, email us at communitycooking at torrentca.gov and check us out online at youtube.com slash torrentcitycable and like us on Facebook at Community Cooking TV.